morning. We just sort of got up this morning, had our coffee, I took a shower. We stayed up late last night. We got up about 8.30 this morning, uh, took our time getting on the road, but here we are. It's a beautiful day. We actually had to go back to Coldfoot because um, Jim did something funny last night. He, uh, we stopped at Coldfoot and got gas and we ended up talking to these three people and uh, Jim got like three gallons of gas. He wasn't paying attention and uh, we ended up paid for it. Got back on the road and realized that we didn't get any diesel. And we're still tired from last night. Today, we continue our adventure north along the Dalton Highway, past the Arctic Circle on one of the most beautiful days we have seen in Alaska. We stopped to stretch our legs along the Trans-Alaska Pipeline and capture images of this enormous tower of steel stretching across the land. The pipeline is now over 40 years old and has carried over 20 billion barrels of oil down from the North Slope after oil was discovered in Alaska in 1968. This is such a cool shot. I mean, I don't think I've been to the pipeline this close. Anyway, what I was just looking at is look at all the little, the dents and the rust. And how much upkeep it must take to get this thing together. Think there's anything in it right now? Yeah, oil. Well, I know. So. <laughs> Okay, I know there's oil. I was wondering, like, how much, if any. There's a lot of reasons we escape into the mountains. But, my God, look at this. It is incredible. Little bit of a breeze, but it's 70 degrees. And just breathtaking. The air is so fresh and crisp. As we entered the straightest and smoothest section of highway we have seen, we are greeted by an enormous formation of rock called Succapack Mountain. Located 90 miles north of the Arctic Circle and at 4,500 feet in elevation, we couldn't help but think of the forces it must have taken to create such a unique geological formation. And this was just the beginning of what we are about to see along the Dalton Highway. We stopped at the entrance to Adigan Pass. Getting ready to go up over the top. Wanted to let a few of the truckers go behind us and check it out. I'll do my best to film it. Uh, one of the challenges that we've had so far is the road is bumpy. 
holding the camera steady. I don't want to make you guys car sick, but I want you to see everything. There's so much to see. Oftentimes I don't know when to turn the camera on. Uh, so we're doing our best to capture all of it along the way, but I asked Jim to stop here, Attigan Pass. Let's do it. I'm trying to convince Jim to let me walk up one of these, I'm gonna call it a hill, a mountain, but on the way back, my goal is to get to the top of one of those mountains, somewhere along the way. We'll see if we have time. So this area, this is the end of the forest. Uh, moving forward, all we'll be in is tundra. The very last spruce tree is right up there on that ridge. And then there won't be any more spruce. Huh. I don't see a spruce tree, do you? Somewhere up there. See, oh, I three. see it, yeah. Okay. That's it, that's the end of the forest. End of the forest, onto the tundra. And it's still 70 degrees. Attigan Pass is a high mountain pass in the Brooks Range connecting oil producing areas of the North Slope with the interior of Alaska. This is also the moment in our journey when we cross the Continental Divide. The natural beauty we discovered here was larger than life. Let's pause to take a look and you'll understand. Holy shit. You just come up over that and you come in to this. Look at this. What just happened? Does it get any better, babe? Does it? Does it get better than that? Yep. What? <laughs> no way. That was awesome. We just came up over the pass and boom. And this. This is just, so I guess what, depending on the weather, it's depending on your experience coming through here, right? Yes. Look at our weather. <laughs> we couldn't ask for anything more than this.
So you guys, uh, this is both breathtaking and nerve-wracking all at the same time. I just asked Jim to pull over because I want to show you something. That's incredible. After experiencing the Brooks Range in such an up-close and personal way, I found myself compelled to do a little research when we were back in cell phone service. If you're like us and you like to nerd out on geology, you might find it interesting to know that these mountains were uplifted by the Earth's crust about 14 and a half million years ago. Millions of years of folding and faulting and major overthrusting and eventually being eroded by rivers, glaciers, and permafrost. It truly is one of the most beautiful things that I have ever seen. like to be circling among the clouds because without you by my side I would be stuck here on the ground you're lighting up the way I can see the road ahead of me I won't be stumbling in the dark your eyes are shining like the stars I was down until you saved me, until you set me free My eyes were closed, now I see clear as day And I just wanted to say that you can take me high Feels like I can fly You can take me high I can see the sun staring at you when you make that smile I'm moving closer to you now I can't get close enough somehow And I was down Until you saved me Until you set me free My eyes were closed Now I see clear as day And I just wanted to say That you can take me high Feels like I can fly I don't need anybody I don't need anybody else No one will ever take me No one will ever take me away from you At mile 272 of the Dalton Highway is a popular place to stop and rest that Jim was really excited to show me called Galbraith Lake. The lake is named after an Alaskan bush pilot, Bart Galbraith, who died in a plane crash flying from Barter Island to Barrow in 1950. It, all used, it also used to be a work camp during the construction of the pipeline in 1975. Well, we got to the end of the road here. This is the road. Hey, I was showing them that we just got to the end of the road. So our goal was Galbraith Lake, but there's a little bit of snow. So I don't think we're gonna make it. Jim just got back from walking it and uh, not too bad right here, but the further you get in, the deeper the snow. He wants to go right over here to the campground. So close, but so far.
beautiful spot. So I guess we'll call it a day. Call it a day? <laughs> it's only freaking three o'clock in the afternoon. Let's keep going. Hi, Galbraith Lake. We tried. 79 degrees, babe. Yeah. Oh, look at our backup camera. It is a mess. <laughs> Did that say 79 degrees? No. Okay. Dang. Seventy-two, seventy-two degrees. Bumpy and beautiful. This is just a beautiful area. It feels a little unnatural to say we continued south towards the Arctic Circle, but we did. We knew that there was a storm coming and we had already visited Dead Horse several times and in our opinion, with the weather the way it was and the luck we had had so far, Galbraith Lake was a wonderful place to stop and turn around. As we turned around to head back south, we took our time to look for wildlife, admiring the natural slopes and curves of the road and how the earth gently transitions from the riverbed to the mountaintops. Amber sees the water. <laughs> She's not having it. I can't believe she hasn't jumped out. Jim's out there telling you all about <clears throat> the mosquitoes. They're all over the place out there. And a whole bunch got in here too. So I'm in here on mosquito duty. 
with some vegetables and ranch. Waiting on a hot dog. But I think I'm I think I'm gonna hang out in here because I need to get rid of these mosquitoes. There's one on Ember right now. I need to get rid of that. Sorry, honey bunny. And I'm gonna hang out in here. Um, we're gonna target practice out there. I'm gonna eat my hot dog and my veggies and call it a night. So we decided to stay the night here at the Arctic Circle. And this is the Alaska Life. I don't know if you can see all the mosquitoes. But there's like a bajillion mosquitoes. I'm grilling some dinner. The funny part is, it's raining, and rain is supposed to make mosquitoes go away. But they're all over the place. I'm going to let you hear the sounds of Alaska for a few minutes. So that's what it sounds like in Alaska, just so that you're prepared. If you ever come up here, Alaskans like to play. Looks like Jim's trying to be die hard out there. Swatting those mosquitoes, wearing his hood, lighting a fire. I've got my diffuser, my ember, my adult beverages, that's all I need. I don't want to be outside with the mosquitoes right now. I'm good. Perfectly fine right here. Right here. With my ember. When you're up and on the road early, this is exactly what you don't want to be faced with. Remember when we said in an earlier video to expect the unexpected. Weather conditions changed on us overnight, pouring down several inches of rain, which would normally be fine, but did I mention that certain parts of the Dalton Highway are treated with sodium chloride, which can turn a manageable drive into a slippery, dangerous mud bath? In late April, frost boils and soft spots appear, and the rain turns these frost heaves into what I call soft spots of surprises. Because you never really know what you're going to get when your tire hits one of these spots at 45 miles an hour on an 11% gradient. If you're planning to drive this road during your explorations of Alaska, don't forget that Slippery sneaks up on you.
Somebody. This is a beautiful place to have morning coffee. good way to start the morning. I have my chocolate chip cookies and coffee, rain. Well this sign is so true. Where are all the animals? This is something that Jim and I go back and forth about I can never see any animals. So here's some wildlife viewing tips. Travel slow. Pause in one place to scan open areas, hillsides, cliffs, lakes, or stream banks. Take a hike away from the road. Travel when most animals are active, which means in the evening or early morning. So it's early morning, we should be seeing animals. And stop at visitor centers to inquire about wildlife hotspots. Well, let me just tell you, we're in the middle of freaking nowhere. But this sign has to tell us how to spot animals. There's one.
I'll let Jim tell you what this spot is. Okay. Here you have rules of the Dalton Highway, even though we've been on it. Where are we? So this is Yukon River Camp. It's a little campground. It's free. And we're about a mile from the river. Huh. I gotta say, it really is random. And there are some spots in the woods. We are just a little bit dirty. Welcome to the Yukon River. I think we've told you about the pipeline run oil from Prudhoe down to Valdez. We've talked about it in a couple of our videos. And up here is Prudhoe Bay in Alaska. The pipeline runs all the way down to Valdez. <laughs> 